Yuriko was panicking, Izuku had just been struck in the chest by a beam of energy that shot right through him. She landed beside Tsu in tears, Tsu. W what should I do, she asked as tears ran down her face. Stop the bleeding. Use that ring you got and stop the bleeding. That should buy us enough time Tsu said looking at the bleeding Izuku, she didn't even care that Izuku's identity was revealed. Yurika nodded, are right, she quickly created a violet colored gauze pad. She may have stopped the bleeding temporarily but Izuku was still bleeding internally. We need to get back to the others, they should be back at the main building. Can you carry us? Tsu asked. Why yeah I think so Yurika then looked at Inko who was still wrapped in her construct. If he dies I will make sure you pay she said creating a construct platform for Tsu and Izuku. Inko didn't have that luxury and was dragged along in the sky. Izawa was standing outside the main building with most of his students, Vlad went to check on his students as soon as Dabi attacked. Mr. Izawa, we still can't find Yurika, Tsu, Bakugo, or Todoroki, said Aitsa. Damn it, they still might be in the forest. I'll go look for them, have everyone head inside and do not come out no matter what. Izawa ordered, he was about to run into the forest when he saw a violet light touch down just a few feet away. It took a second but Izawa registered who it was, Yurika, he yelled out surprised. Inko landed on the ground hard as she was not able to move at all. The whole class turned to see Yurika in her star sapphire uniform, Okako. You're just like GL. Mina said, happy to see her friend. Speaking of which, where is he, as she got closer she noticed Yurika holding GL, then the blood. Oh no. Mr. Izawa, I need to get him to a hospital, Yurika said, running towards Izawa with Izuku in her arms. Izawa was shocked to see the state he was in, H how did this happen, no there's no time for that. Go, take him to the hospital near UA. I'll have recovery girl meet you there. Thank you Mr. Izawa the violet glow of her ring began to shine around her as she jumped into the air. The class watched her leave with Izuku in her arms, Sotsu, who's that, asked Izawa. She's one of the villains that attacked us, Yurika managed to catch her before GL got her, said Tsu glaring at Inko. Inko struggled against the construct ropes, please all I wanted was to take my son back. Izawa's eyes went wide, son? GL is your son. Inko nodded, yes. The class began to mutter, we have a lot of questions for you then. For now we need to get going, everyone head toward the bus Izawa wrapped Inko in his capture weapon just in case the ropes around her came undone. Several years ago. Izuku was six years old when he sat on the roof of the orphanage, he'd just gotten out of his eighth failed adoption interview this month. At first it seemed as if it was going good, that is until they found out he was quirkless. The people who wanted to adopt him no longer wanted to, thanks to Izuku's quirklessness. Just then Maria came up from the roof door, Izuku. There you are I've been looking all over for you. How many times do I have to tell you, not to sit so close to the edge it's dangerous. Now come on let's. However before she could finish Izuku cut her off. Hey Maria, why doesn't anyone want me, he asked looking down at the ground. The question burned a hole into Maria's heart, here was this six-year-old kid thinking no one wanted him. I get that I'm quirkless, but that doesn't mean I am a bad kid, does it? I mean, I eat everything that's on my plate, even the greens, I go to bed on time, I wake up and do chores, so why? Everyone else in school has a mom and a dad but I don't, did I do something wrong? Izuku said, turning to Maria with tears in his eyes. Maria wrapped her arms around Izuku and pulled him in tight as he cried into her chest. Tears were seen falling from Maria's face as she held Izuku, No Izuku, you didn't do anything wrong and don't ever say something like that again. You are the smartest, kindest, most selfless person I know, even at your young age. So don't you dare think that you did something wrong, I won't let you. I believe, no, 
I know that one day you are going to meet some amazing people, that are going to accept and love you for who you are. If by chance you don't, just know that I will always stay with you. I will love you, no matter what. I promise. Just then a flash of yellow light covered everything in the landscape, Izuku opened his eyes to find himself much older and in an all too familiar scene. He was wearing his green lantern uniform, surrounded by the wreckage of the orphanage, and in his arms was the now dead Maria. Izuku's eyes went wide, Maria. Hey wake up he said, shaking her a bit. Maria, come on you promised to stay with me, remember. Maria, Maria, Maria. Maria, he yelled out towards the sky. Hospital. Eureka landed just outside the emergency room and ran in pleading for a doctor. Within seconds some of the nurses went and got a stretcher, Eureka placed him on it with her costume stained in his blood. His blood pressure is dropping, one of the nurses noted as they checked his vitals. Running alongside them Eureka held Izuku's hand for as long as she could. We need to get him to the operating table, now. He's losing too much blood the doctor yelled out. That's when one of the nurses grabbed Eureka, sorry miss, you need to stay out here. She didn't want to leave but she knew they needed to do their jobs in order to save him. Eureka nodded and slipped off Izuku's green lantern ring, she held it tight as they took him into emergency surgery. It was now the next morning and Izuku still wasn't out of surgery. Eureka sat in the waiting room holding onto his ring, Please Izuku, I don't want to lose you she said as tears fell from her face. Just then Izawa followed by Nizu and All Might entered the waiting room, how is he? Izawa asked. Eureka looked up wiping away the tears, I don't know, I've gone to ask them about him but they keep saying he's still in surgery. At least I know he's not dead, his ring would have flown away if he was. I see, so that's at least some good news, Nizu said. Speaking of rings, it looks like you got one. Eureka looked down at her ring, yeah, it's the violet color of love, I became a star sapphire. However I am not the only one who became one that night, one of the villains, Toga got one too. I see, we need to be careful. If Toga was working with the League of Villains then that means they now have two lanterns on their side. All Might explained, he then placed a hand on Eureka's shoulder. You need to get some rest, you've been through enough. We will call you if anything changes with the lantern. However Eureka shook her head, thanks but no thanks, I'm staying here. I'll rest when he gets out of surgery. Just then the doctor walked into the waiting room, Eureka stood up as he approached. How is he doc, asked Izawa. The doctor removed his mask, and smiled, there's no need to worry, we stopped the bleeding and managed to close his injuries with the help of recovery girl. Lucky for him whatever pierced his skin barely missed his heart and missed his lungs. He just got out of surgery so he's being sent over to the recovery bay, I don't know how but he's alive. He must be too stubborn to die, anyway you can go ahead and see him now. Eureka breathed the biggest sigh of relief, he's not stubborn doctor, he just has the will to live. Thank you for everything doctor she said bowing. The doctor nodded and began to walk away. The four went over to where Izuku was, there laying in a bed was Izuku hooked up to every wire and breathing through a mask. Eureka went over and grabbed his hand, Izuku, thank goodness. The other three saw that Eureka needed some alone time and decided to give it to her. However before they left Eureka spoke, all might, Mr. Izawa. She turned around. When you find out where they are, I want in. All Might's eyes went wide, young Eureka, I really don't. However he stopped when Izawa lifted up his hand. You want in, fine you'll get your chance said Izawa. Eureka nodded, thanks, I won't disappoint. That I swear. The rest of the day Eureka watched over Izuku and only left his side to go eat or to go see how some of her friends were doing. Recovery girl came in a few times to heal Izuku and some of class 1A students, this included Momo who encountered a low-tier Nomu. The class wanted to check up on GL, 
he was a friend after all. Eureka didn't want them to know his identity so she drew the curtain so they could only see his body and not his face. How bad is he? Asked Kiri's Hima. Doing better, recovery girl has been making rounds to heal him said Eureka. How did this happen? I mean he's usually untouchable. Jiro said, surprised at GL's condition. It was Shigaraki. Eureka clenched her fists. I don't know how, but he's even more powerful than last time. His ring is fueled by fear so I can only imagine what he's done to obtain that power. The class fell silent, come on guys we should go. GL needs to recover, you coming Okako? Asked Mina. Nah I think I'm good here, I want to be with him when he wakes up she said reaching for his hand. Mina nodded, as the class began to leave. However Tsu stayed behind, she waited until everyone left to talk. So Izuku is GL, I would have never guessed. Thank you Tsu, for not telling anyone, said Yuriko with a smile. She nodded, it's not my place to tell. Besides he must have a good reason to not reveal himself. Yuriko nodded, yeah, he thinks by not telling anyone he could save the ones closest to him. But what happens when he's the one needing saving she said kissing his forehead. So that's how you got that ring, if green is will, and yellow is fear. That must mean violet is love, you really do love him don't you? Ribbit. Asked Sue. Yeah I do, he's one of the reasons why I want to be a hero. Said Eureka. Yet when he needs me the most, I can't do anything. I feel so useless. Don't beat yourself up so much, you did what you could. Now what you can do is watch over him, until he gets better. Said Tsu. I will. So whatever happened to that lady, the one claiming to be his mother? Eureka asked, curious. Tsu shrugged, don't know, I know she was taken to jail but that's about it. They got a DNA sample but they need to cross-reference it with GLs in order to confirm if she's really who she says she is. I can help out with that, said Izawa, walking into the room. Turns out we don't need a sample because he is her son. Records show she was admitted to a hospital years ago and had a child, the birth certificate has the child under Izuku Midoriya. As much as I hate to say it, Inko is Izuku's mother. Eureka gritted her teeth, why? Why is she back after all these years? That's what I intend to find out, we have her in a holding cell. I'm actually going down there to watch her interrogation. I wanted to see if there were any changes in his conditions before I left, if he was awake maybe he wanted to speak to her. Izawa said, rubbing the back of his head. No changes yet but the doctors say he should wake up soon enough. And if he would want to speak to her, I don't know. Having your mother show up out of nowhere after so many years, I know he would have questions. Eureka looked at Izuku. I don't think he needs another emotional outburst. I understand, well I'll be off Izawa said, turning to leave. Just as he was out the door a voice called out to him, wait, I'm going with you. Everyone turned to the bed to see Izuku sitting up. Izuku. You're awake. Eureka said, wrapping him in a hug. Izuku smiled, hey Eureka, sorry I made you worry. How are you feeling Izuku? Izawa asked. And in a lot of pain but could be worse, I could be dead. How is everyone, he asked. A few of them fell victim to some sort of gas but are expected to make a full recovery. Besides you, Momo was the only one who sustained any serious injuries but she too is expected to be fine. Izawa explained. Izuku nodded, thanks, that's good to hear. About what you said, are you sure about meeting her? Izawa asked with concern. Yes, I have a few questions I want answered, said Izuku. No Izuku, you need to stay here and rest said Yuriko. You almost died for God's sake. Please just rest. Izuku placed his hand on her cheek, I'm fine Eureka really, right now all I really want or need are answers and I won't get them here. 
Eurica saw that look in Izuku's eyes, he wasn't going to give up on this. Fine, but I'm going with you and I won't take no as an answer, got it? Yeah, yeah I understand, said Izuku. Good, oh you might need this she said reaching into her pocket and pulled out his green lantern ring. Izuku smiled, and raised his hand, calling back the ring. The ring flew from Eurika's hand and onto Izuku's finger, soon his green lantern uniform appeared. All right let's go he said standing up. Eurika nodded, right, you coming Izawa. Oh great, I forgot, now I have to deal with two of you. Izawa said following after them. If we are going to fly, can you at least make something less fear inducing? The two lanterns looked at each other, we will try, but no promises. Izuku's doctor saw them leave and tried to force him back into bed, however after some back and forth and Izuku promising to come back he was allowed to leave. With Izawa strapped to a green construct jetpack the three flew towards the police station. The three landed at the police station, as they did Izawa fell to his knees, I thought I told you to take it easy. Yuriko laughed and Izuku smiled, sorry Izawa, just trying to lighten up the mood. Izawa sighed, fine, let's just get this over with. Just as they were about to enter the building Izuku grabbed his chest, Izuku. Yuriko saw him hunch over. I I am fine, come on let's do this he said walking into the building. The three of them entered the building and were escorted down to the holding cells. They were brought into a room with one-way glass, on the other side was a metal table and two chairs across from each other. Just then Naomasa entered the room and sat down at one of the chairs. All right, bring her in, Izawa said, pressing a button. Izuku was nervous, his hand trembled as he waited for his mother to enter the room. Yuriko saw this and quickly grabbed his hand, he didn't say anything but she could feel him squeeze her hand tight. The door to the interrogation room opened and in walked Inko handcuffed. Inko was told to sit down on the chair, Inko Midoriya, quirk, attraction. Says here you've been missing for years, no paper trail, or records of any kind. Tell me where have you been, and why did you suddenly appear with villains? Naomasa asked, placing a folder on the table. Inko looked down at the table, where is my son? Right your son is Isaac Omidoriya, I was told he was badly injured and is in intensive care now. They don't know if he's going to make it Naomasa said to Inko's shock. And no, 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 no. That can't be right. After everything we did to make sure he was in my grasp, it can't end like this. Inko said bringing her hands towards her face. Naomasa noted her choice in words, we. Inko stopped, I want to see him, I want to see my son. Sorry but that won't be possible, not until you answer some questions we have. Let's start by trying to understand why you abandon your son at an orphanage. Naomasa said, narrowing his eyes. This was it, Izuku was going to finally get some answers, Inko took a deep breath and stared at Naomasa. Cause I didn't need him anymore, not after I found out he was quirkless. Izuku's eyes went wide, I was going to kill him but that would have only made me a wanted woman. So I did the next best thing, I gave him up. Both Izawa and Yuriko turned to Izuku, his face was so filled with despair. He was holding out for a little bit of hope that it was all just some sort of mistake, but after hearing that. Izuku. But now, now he has that ring. Now he has a use for me, no to us said Inko, this only infuriated Eurika. Once I'm out of here, I'll take him far away from here. We will train him, mold him into something I can take pride in calling a son Inko said with a smile on her face. That was it, Eurika couldn't listen to Inko any longer. Pointing her ring at the glass she created a giant violet colored hand that smashed through the glass. The wall came down, what the was all Inko could say before the massive hand grabbed her and slammed her against the wall. From the broken wall Eurika stepped through, why you, her eyes burned violet as she approached Inko. Ahh it's the girlfriend. 
however before Inko could say anything else Eurika placed a metal plate over her mouth. Shut up, you don't get to talk anymore. You don't deserve to call yourself a mother. If you would have never shown up Izuka would be just fine. Eurika said, causing the hand to squeeze. Thanks to the metal plate around her mouth Inko couldn't yell but her eyes said it all, she was in pain. Eurika stop, you don't want to do this Izawa said, shocked at what he was seeing. Eurika pressed the hand further, that is until she felt someone's hand on her shoulder, turning around she found Izuku. That's enough, Eurika, let her go he said, his voice so empty of life. Eurika's eyes reverted back to her brown color, but... Please don't do this, not for someone like me said Izuku. With a sad look on her face Eurika let go of Inko. She hit the floor grabbing her sides, that's when Izuku walked up to her. My son, I knew you would come around. Inko reached out to Izuku. All my life I thought about you. There wasn't a night in that cold lonely room of the orphanage where I didn't think about you. Hoping, praying that one day you would show up looking for me, so we could be a real family again. Now I know that was all the dreams of a child, a little helpless child that just wanted a hug from his mom. Izuku turned away. But no more, I don't need you and honestly I don't think I ever will. You didn't give up that boy that night, you killed him. Izuku said walking away from Inko. With her arm still outstretched Inko reached out for Izuku but missed, Didanti walk away from me Izuku. I am your mother, you listen to what I tell you. She yelled out but Izuku kept on walking. Defeated Inko slammed her fists towards the ground, I was the only thing standing in their way, I was the wall protecting you from them. If you reject me now then there will be nothing I can do to stop them, you will have to face them alone. I don't know who you are talking about but I will not be alone. Izuku said, turning to Inko with Eurika by his side. I have her and my friends in class 1A, whoever they are we will face them. I at least know that they won't abandon me like you did, with that Izuku and Eurika walked out of the interrogation room. Inko watched them and felt pity, no, no you won't. You don't know how much power Cadmus holds. My son you will quickly find out just how strong they are when he reawakens. Judgment day is coming. Izawa said nothing as the two walked past him, now outside Izuku took off into the air and into space, Eurika followed close by. Izuku landed on the moon and sat down looking back at the earth, Eurika took a seat beside him. Hey, how are you holding up? Eurika asked in a soft, gentle voice. I'm fine, I just need some time. What about you? It looked like you were about to crush her said Izuku. Eurika looked away. Yes yeah, sorry about that, I lost my cool. Don't be, it just shows how much you care about me and thanks for looking out for me. Izuku said with a smile. Well someone has too, we both know you would be completely lost without me Eurika said while nudging Izuku. Yeah I guess you're right. Izuku fell silent as he stared at the earth. So what now, asked Eurika. Izuku thought about it, now, we get ready. Once they find out where Bakugo and Todoroki are, we strike. And this time, Shigaraki won't catch me off guard like he did last time. Yurika nodded, right. The two looked into each other's eyes, the moment was right. Yurika put her hand on his chest and leaned in but stopped when she felt something warm. Huh, removing her hand she saw blood seeping through his costume. Izuku. You're bleeding your wound must have opened up again. That's it we are heading back to the hospital said Eurika leaning back. Ah but my kiss he said disappointed. Eurika rolled her eyes, we can do that later for now, let's head back to the hospital. Back on earth. Bakugo woke up to an unfamiliar place, ah look who's finally awake Davi said sitting across the room from him. Where am I? Bakugo asked, still dazed. You are with the League of Villains, and you my friend are in for a world of hurt? Dabi said with a smile. Just then the screams of Todoroki were heard echoing through the walls. 
What are you doing to him? Bakugo tried to break free from the restraints but couldn't. Don't worry you'll know soon enough. In the other room Todoroki was strapped to a table as yellow construct needles dug into him. Thanks to your little run-in with the Red Lantern, your body managed to absorb some of its emotional energy. It buried itself deep within your heart, waiting for another rage-inducing moment but with my, tools, your rage as well as the others, will soon be mine. Shigaraki said as his yellow ring began to shine brighter. In the background a giant container was seen with blood-red light coming from it. My son, are you sure this will work? asked a monitor with the words AFO written across it. It will master, once I have the power of fear and rage, there will be no stopping us. Shigaraki said with a smile. The heroes, they won't take the sitting down you know that right? They will come for you. AFO said. Let them come, we will be ready for them Toga said walking into the room with her star sapphire uniform. On the other side of the monitor AFO smiled, you really have grown haven't you Shigaraki? Police station. After the incident Inko was transferred into another room and they were about to continue the interrogation when a woman wearing a blue dress walked in. Who are you? Nanomasa asked, getting up from his chair. That is none of your concern, all you need to know is that she is coming with me said the woman with a commanding voice. What? Like hell she is, you can't just take her just like that. Naomasa approached her only to have a piece of paper pushed into his face. This letter says otherwise Naomasa grabbed the paper, as he began to read it his eyes widened. Now if you excuse me, we have places to be the woman then walked over to Inko. Inko you have broken Task Force X's rules. You are to return to base and await future orders. Do I make myself clear? Count yourself lucky I don't blow up your head. Inko nodded, yes ma'am she then turned to the one-way glass. Tell my son that I will see him real soon. That's when Izawa came storming into the room. Who are you? Izawa asked, stepping up to the woman. That's classified and if I were you I wouldn't probe the situation too closely, we wouldn't want someone to end up like your friend did all those years ago now would we? Izawa flinched when the mystery said that. The two men watched Inko and the mystery woman walk right out the door. What the heck was that Naomasa? You just let her walk out of here, I'm going after them Izawa then began to leave when he was stopped by Naomasa. You can't, take a look at this he said handing over the paper. Izawa grabbed it and began to read over it, who the heck is Cadmus? And what makes them think they can just walk in here and take her? Look at the signatures on the bottom said Naomasa. Izawa's eyes went wide when he saw the Prime Minister's name and the name of the Hero Regulation Commissioner. There's no way. It seems whoever Inko was talking about just made their move. I don't know what's going on but something big is about to happen, I can feel it Naomasa said leaving the room. First on the agenda was making sure Izuku was completely healed, after some kisses from Recovery Girl, Izuku was back to 100%. The police and heroes were hard at work trying to find out where the League of Villains took both UA students. In the meantime Izuku was training Yurika on how to use her ring, even though she already had a good understanding she lacked focus. Nizu was kind enough to let them use one of the gyms so they could practice and train. Since the ring ran on love she needed to focus on what she loved, in this case what she loved was her parents and especially Izuku. Focus Yurika. Your constructs are strong, maybe even stronger than mine but it means nothing if you don't focus said Izuku, firing blasts at Yurika. Creating shields, Yurika blocked every blast Izuku sent her way. Feeling a bit overwhelmed, Yurika created several violet colored bats, with a swipe of her hand Yurika managed to send all the blasts back. Not expecting it Izuku didn't have a chance to shield himself. The blast hit exploding as they hit Izuku. GL. Yurika yelled out running towards him. From the smoke Izuku appeared with a few cuts and bruises, man you really are strong. Remind me never to get into a fight with you. Are you alright? she asked. Izuku nodded, yeah, 
nothing some rest won't heal. Come on let's take a break he said creating some recliner chairs. Do you think they found Bakugo and Todoroki yet, asked Eureka. I hope so, it's been three days and there still hasn't been any news. I've even gone out looking for them but the ring can't pick them up. I just hope they are okay. Izuku said, staring at his ring. I can't help feel that I could have done something more to stop them. Izuku, you did everything you could. Although I get what you mean, I had all this power and I just stood around doing nothing. And because of that Bakugo and Todoroki got taken, not to mention you got injured as well. Yuriko got up from the chair and walked up to Izuku. So don't go blaming yourself for what happened. We will get them back, that I can promise you. Yuriko said, grabbing his face. Izuku smiled, yeah, guess you're right. Do you want to continue your training or do you want to do something else, he asked, picking her up by the waist and placing her on his lap. Well, that depends on your definition of something else. Yuriko said leaning in for a kiss. Just as their lips were about to meet, a voice called out to them. Am I interrupting, the two got off of each other and turned to the entrance of the gym. There they found Izawa walking their way. W we weren't doing anything. Izuku said, blushing through his mask. I didn't ask if you were, anyway I got some news for the two of you, said Izawa. We found them. Izuku and Yuriko's eyes went wide, really? That's great let's go. Hold on Yuriko, we can't go just yet. This is going to be a two-prong attack, we found two locations they could be at. Momo managed to place a tracker on Anoma but our investigation found another place where they can be at. Explained Izawa. Two. Oh I see, so you want us to take one location each? Asked Izuku. Izawa nodded, exactly, normally we don't allow vigilantes to participate, much less my own student. He said, looking at Eureka. But things are different, we are going in completely blind on this one. Not to mention two villains are now ring holders. The police chief has made an exception and will allow you two to participate, if you choose to. Said Izawa. Without giving it a second thought they both responded, Yes. Izawa smiled, good, the operation begins in a few hours so get yourselves ready and meet us at the police station. He said, turning to leave. Oh just so you know, we have security cameras in the gyms. So I would think twice before doing anything naughty in here Izawa said pointing to one of the cameras in the ceiling. The two blushed as they looked around and saw the different cameras. Shall we go home and rest for a bit? Asked Izuku. Yuriko nodded, yeah, we'll need the energy for later tonight. This is it Izuku, let's get them back. A few hours later, police station. After recharging their rings Izuku and Yuriko flew over to the police station. Walking in they were escorted to a large conference room. Inside stood some of Japan's top heroes. All Might, Endeavor, Edgeshot, Kamui Woods, an empty lady to name a few. Quite the lineup we have here. Said Izuku. OGL, Stat Sapphire, glad you two can make it. Said Nomisa walking up to them. Of course, we wouldn't miss this for the world. Said Yuriko. Good then let's get started. Just then the lights dimmed. Alright everyone let's go over this one more time. We have two possible locations where the students can be located at. We are going to split you into two groups. Group 1 will handle the first location, it's located in the warehouse district just east of here. The group will consist of Star Sapphire, Best Genist, MT Lady, Gang Orca, and a task force of police officers. Explained Nomisa. The group all looked at each other and nodded, good, the second team will handle location 2. A picture of a bar was shown on screen. We have reason to believe that this bar is where the League of Villains hang out. Since this area will pose the most danger, the team will consist of All Might, Endeavor, Edgeshot, Kamui Woods, and Green Lantern. 
said Nomasa. Any questions? No one raised their hand, good, then we leave in ten minutes. Good luck everyone. Izuku turned to Yurika to find her taking a deep breath, you nervous. Yurika nodded, a bit, but I should be fine. Just then Izuku felt a touch on his shoulder, looking back he found Endeavor. Ah Endeavor it's been a while. Yes, yes it has. I didn't think you would actually show up, I am genuinely surprised to see you. With you being a vigilante and everything. Said Endeavor. Yeah well some of my friends are kidnapped so it only makes sense I'd be here. Explained Izuku. Endeavor nodded, I see, well let's hope we can save your friends and my son. With that Endeavor turned away, as he left though, Izuku noticed his arm. He lost it back when Todoroki was a red lantern and in its place was an arm completely made out of fire. He seems to have mellowed out. Yurika commented. Izuku nodded, I guess having your own son take your arm will do that. We should get ready. 7 p.m. Location 1 Yurika used her ring to drop everyone off at Location 1, All right everyone let's go she said, creating a slide for them to get down from the building they were on. One by one the heroes landed on the ground and quickly made their way towards the warehouse, hold on I'll check for traps. Yurika then pointed her ring towards the warehouse. Ring, scan for any traps. Suddenly a violet light shined on the building, no traps detected. Good, looks like it's safe for us to go in reaching the door, Yurika created some bolt cutters and cut the lock. Running in the heroes were immediately met by several gnomas. They roared running towards them, M.T. Lady. Give us some room, yelled out Gang Orca. Activating her quirk M.T. Lady began to grow giant-sized and blew the roof right off the warehouse, now with room to move around she did quick work of the low-tier Nomuas. Looking around the heroes saw what this warehouse was, spread around were these large tubes filled with a green liquid. Is this where they made the Nomuas, asked Eureka, shining a light at the tanks. Looks that way, who can even think of doing something like this? Gang Orca asked disgustedly. Now, now, there is no reason to be mean about it. Why can't anyone appreciate the work they were doing here, a voice said coming from the shadows. Not giving whoever this was any chance, Eureka encased them in a violet colored cage. Hey Star. What are you doing, it could be a civilian said MT Lady. No. She's right. Why would there be a civilian here? Identify yourself. Best genist yelled out. Ah, so this is the constructs Shigaraki has been talking about, the man said, placing his hand on the construct. Suddenly cracks began to form all around the violet colored box. Eurika's eyes went wide, what the? She quickly focused on repairing the box, but every time she did more cracks began to appear. Eureka held her ring arm and put everything she had into the box. Sweat began to drip from Eureka's forehead, see can't he hold on, much, longer, she yelled out. Suddenly the construct box exploded sending pieces of the construct in every direction. Shielding herself from the shards Eureka didn't see the man's arm scrunch up and fire off massive blasts of air. With little time to react Eureka put up a shield up in front of her but it proved useless as the blast shattered it. The blast hit Eureka square in the stomach, the impact was enough to send her flying into the nearby wall. Star. Best genist yelled out. Turning back the villain he used his quirk to tie him up in his own clothes fibers. Do you really think this can hold me? Asked the man stepping out of the light. He wore a black mask and a suit. He can move, even with my fibers holding him back, just then the man once again began to scrunch up his arm and fire another air blast. Unlike Eureka, Best Genus didn't have anything to protect him. The air blast ripped through his costume and his abdomen causing blood to splatter all over the place. Now, let's deal with the rest of you, shall we, the man said turning to the rest of the heroes. Location 2 Izuku adjusted his ring as he stood in a construct helicopter he created, they were several hundred meters in the air. 
They were going to jump down right on top of the villains, are we ready? he asked. The heroes nodded, all right, let's do this. Izuku then walked over to the door, swinging it open the wind blew in his face. Jump! One by one the heroes jumped out of the helicopter and nose dived towards the bar. As they got closer Izuku created parachutes for everyone, as they glided down Izuku could see the police getting into position outside the bar. All right guys here we go, release, he yelled, letting the construct parachute disappear. Inside the bar the League of Villains were sitting around Bakugo and Todoroki who were tied to chairs. So what are we going to do with them, asked Dabi. Bakugo and Todoroki were barely conscious but they can still see and hear. We should just kill them. Or maybe we could let them go. Said twice. Maybe you're right. Maybe we should kill them and send their body to Yue. Shigaraki said in his yellow lantern costume. As they were discussing twice noticed that Toga was quiet. Everything all right Toga? She nodded, yeah, I'm just missing GL that's all. He was so close yet I couldn't have him. If only that bitch didn't show up, I could have had him all to myself. Her violet colored ring began to shine bright as memories of Izuka flooded her mind. Just then it began to flash, Toga what does that mean? Asked Dabi. Toga's eyes went wide, he's here. Just then the roof to the building came crashing down around them. Toga managed to shield herself from the falling debris by creating a bubble around herself. However the rest of the league were in disarray, that's when they heard a voice. Your days are numbered villains. Why, because we are here. All Might announced landing. Damn it. It's All Might. Spinner yelled out. However before they could do anything most of the league were immobilized by Edshot and quickly knocked out by the hero known as Gran Terrano. The only ones left awake were Shigaraki and Toga. Give it up Shigaraki, it's over. You lost. Lost? No, I'm just getting started. He yelled out as himself and Toga pointed their rings towards the heroes. However before they could do anything, green colored chains pinned their hands against the wall. Sorry you too but no, it's over Izuku said floating down from the open hole in the roof. Ahh the lantern is here. Shigaraki said watching Izuku land beside the heroes. GL. Baby. I knew you'd come to me. Toga said with some crazy looking eyes. Izuku ignored her and directed his attention to Shigaraki. That's when the heroes saw the two students tied up in chairs. Their bodies were all covered in bruises, and their eyes were empty. What did you do to them? Shigaraki smiled, just some experiments. Creating some scissors Izuku cut Bakugo and Todoroki free. My son. Endeavor said looking at the state his son was at, no parent ever wanted to see this. Just as he was getting closer a voice was heard, ah All Might, you finally decided to show up. All Might and Gran Torino instantly recognized the voice. All for one. It's been a long time. All Might. Tell me how are your injuries? AFO asked in a condescending voice. All Might grabbed his side, who the heck is this guy? Asked Izuku. Oh it seems the Green Lantern is there with you, how convenient. I have someone here who would like to speak to you. Go on, speak he said talking to someone. Just then the painful grunts of agony were heard, gee Green Lantern. The voice was shaky and weak but Izuku recognized it. And no, it can't be. Izuku said, shocked. Oh but it can be young man, don't worry though, I won't harm her, yet. All I want right now is to make sure Shigaraki is safe said Afo. He's not going anywhere. Izuku yelled out tightening the chains around Shigaraki. I don't think I need your permission to take them with me. Just then Black Sludge began to come out of the villain's mouths. What is going on? Endeavor yelled as he saw the sludge come out of Todoroki and Bakugo's mouths. They are being teleported away. Izuku said, trying to hold the villains in place. However everything he did proved useless when they suddenly disappeared from the bar. 
no. All Might yelled out trying to reach out to his two students. Just then AFO's voice was once again heard, your friend's life is now forfeit lantern, if you wish to see her again, well I'm sure you know how to find us. I almost forgot, here are some parting gifts for you. Where the villains once stood several nomus began to appear, endeavor. Take care of the nomus here. Me and All Might will deal with them. All Might punched a nomu across the face before turning to Izuku and nodding, ring, find Eureka. Izuku's ring began to glow green, scanning, star sapphire located, location 1. They're back at the first location? You two head over there, we will catch up Gran Torino said. GL. Let's go, you didn't have to tell Izuku twice. Creating a bubble around All Might they took off into the sky and towards the first location at lightning speeds. With All for One. Shigaraki landed beside All for One, that was a lot easier than I thought he said adjusting his ring. That it was, to think we are going to get rid of the two pests in a decisive strike. I couldn't be more proud of you my son all for one said placing a hand on his shoulder. So what are we going to do with her? Shigaraki asked, pointing to Yurika who was on the ground bruised and bloody. Let me take care of her a voice said, AFO and Shigaraki turned to find Toga walking towards them. If I get rid of her, then GL will be all mine she said with a twisted smile. Yurika pushed herself, standing up she clenched her stomach, be bring it, I won't let you have GL. AFO smiled, very well Toga, you can do as you wish. Shigaraki, did you get what you needed from those two? Shigaraki nodded, yes sir, all that's left is to wait. Just then there was a twinkle of green in the sky, speak of the devil. All for one. All might, yelled out. GL, throw me. Izuku nodded. Shape shifting the bubble he created a hand, get ready for a fast ball, he said, launching All Might towards AFO. All Might threw a punch to which AFO caught, causing a massive shock wave that pushed everyone on the ground away. Ah All Might, you've grown weak, said AFO holding back his massive fists. We'll just have to see about that. All Might yelled out delivering a hard knee to AFO's stomach that pushed him back a few meters. Hey F asterisk CK face, a voice yelled out. Looking up AFO saw Izuka flying towards him, where is she, he said, firing a blast that knocked AFO on his back. Izuka quickly jumped on him and pointed his ring right at his face. I'll ask you once again, where is she? Izuku asked as his ring began to glow green. The black mask over AFO's face broke exposing his horribly disfigured face, I wouldn't be worrying about her now, boy. Just then a blast of yellow energy hit Izuku in the side sending him crashing through several buildings. I would be more worried about what's about to happen to you. Shigaraki said, floating down beside all for one. Master, let me take care of him. Very well, I will deal with All Might. AFO said turning his attention towards All Might. Shigaraki made his way towards where he sent Izuku, just as he approached the building shined an emerald green color before exploding. Izuku appeared his costume slightly damaged and with a cut across his cheek, T throw me into another building and we are going to have a problem. Shigaraki smiled, we already have a problem, now come on let's do this, he said, charging at Izuku. The two flew at each other, as they met in the middle green and yellow light shined in every direction. With Eureka. Eureka was currently being dragged by the hair through building walls. Toga was going to make sure Eureka paid for getting in her way, tossing her towards a wall. Eureka hit the wall and began to fall but was suddenly grabbed by the neck. Looking up at Eureka, was Toga, her eyes had turned completely violet, I thought you would put up more of a fight. Pity. Why you can't kill me, if you do you're going to break GL's heart Eureka said struggling to get out the words. Toga thought about it before tightening her grip, that's fine, I'll be there to pick up those pieces. I will make GL love me, even if it means manipulating him. Eureka could feel her consciousness fading, 
H have to do something, can't let her. Yes. GL will be all mine. Toga said as Eurica stopped struggling, none of them knew but for a split second Toga's teeth turned razor sharp, almost like a predator. Just then the wall on the other side of the room collapsed, and before Toga could do anything she was hit by several green-colored boxing gloves. Eurica. Izuku yelled out landing to check on her. Opening her eyes, Eurica saw Izuku's face covered in bruises, I Izuku. He smiled as he held Eurica in his arms, hey, how are you holding up? You look like hell. Eurica scoffed, speak for yourself, so what happened? Yeah about that, we should probably get moving. Izuku said looking around. Huh. Just then Izuku picked Eurika up bridal style. I Izuku. What are you doing? Just then three yellow construct dragons destroyed the wall behind them, Izuku quickly went through the wall in front of them. Flying into the night sky, everyone watched as Izuku was chased by the dragons. Eurika looked down and noticed they were getting closer, Izuku. I know. Let me think. Just then Izuku stopped and pointed his ring at the dragons. He then created three green-colored tigers that lunged at the dragons. The constructs fought in the air but Izuku knew his constructs wouldn't last long. Going down at a nearby roof where he set down Eurika. Izuku was on the verge of collapse, the only thing that kept him upright was Eurika. Easy now Izuku, take this time to rest for a bit. I can't rest, he's coming. I need to defeat him. He said watching his constructs get ripped apart one by one. Then let's take him on, together Eurika said standing beside him. Izuku looked at Eurika, how did I land a girl like you? Eurika smiled, you got lucky. Oh luck had nothing to do with it. Izuku leaned in and kissed Eurika on the lips. That wasn't luck either. Just then yellow and violet colored light shined on the roof they were on, if you two are done, why don't we get this over with, said Shigaraki floating in the air with Toga by his side. Izuku and Eurika's rings began to glow bright, let's do this, they yelled out flying towards them. Shigaraki and Toga fired off blasts towards them, Izuku and Eurika quickly created a giant shield of green and violet color. What? They can do that. Toga yelled out, just then Eurika appeared cracking Toga across the face with a right hook. Izuku on the other hand tackled Shigaraki, they crashed through the roof of the building where they went down until they hit ground level. You're going to have to be better than that. Shigaraki said. Plan on it. Izuku said as a green construct bomb fell. Locking Shigaraki in place, Izuku made sure he couldn't escape. The bomb exploded in a green fireball, completely destroying the building they were in and leveling the nearby buildings. Izuku's body was thrown out of the building before it collapsed. Izuku rolled to a stop near another collapsed building, he looked up to see Eurika beating on Toga. From his angle it looked like he was winning, at a girl, keep it up he said proud of Eurika. However in his moment of admiration Izuku was caught off guard, just then four construct harpoons pinned Izuku into the broken wall behind him, Gah, he yelled out in pain. Eurika heard him yell, looking she saw Izuku pinned against the wall, GL. Hold on, I'm coming, but just as she was leaving to help Izuku, Toga came up out of nowhere and created a giant violet construct needle. With her back turned Eurika was stabbed through the back with the giant needle. Eurika let out a cry of pure agonizing pain as Toga pushed the needle even deeper. Just then Toga got close to Eurika's ear, you should have let me have him she said whispering. With a quick flick of her hand the needle began to fall towards the ground with Eurika still impaled. Crashing into the earth Eurika lay there motionless as blood began to run down her back. Eurika. Izuku yelled out trying to free himself of the spikes. As he freed himself from one, two others took their place. Ah uh, uh, you aren't going anywhere. Shigaraki said, pointing his yellow ring at Izuku. Izuku gritted his teeth, why you're not going to get away with this Shigaraki, 
in the background loud booms were heard signaling the fight with All Might and Ofa was still going on. Oh and why is that? You don't have the strength to beat me and your little girlfriend is down for the count. Not to mention All Might is no match for Master, at least not in his current state. It's over and there isn't a damn thing you can do about it? Shigaraki said laughing. Izuku smiled, maybe you're right but who said I was the only one? Shigaraki was confused, what do you mean? Just then the city began to turn green in color, Toga was inches away from killing Yuriko when she stopped. Her eyes widened as the light got brighter, F asterisk CK. Shigaraki was suddenly hit by a giant beam of willpower, the beam was so intense that it burned a hole into the earth. Took you long enough. Izuku said as the yellow constructs began to disappear. Green construct bandages began to wrap around Izuku's injuries, sorry kid we would have gotten here sooner but traffic out in space was a v asterisk tch. So what seems to be the trouble? We got your request for help. Landing beside him were four members of the Green Lantern Corps, this included Kilowog. From the crater Shigaraki began to rise, his yellow lantern suit was ripped in various places, his body cut and bruised in multiple places. T that hurt. He said, bleeding from his lip. We need to take him down. Izuku said looking up at Shigaraki. Kilowog smirked, this jump? He doesn't look like much, but if he managed to best you then he could prove a challenge. All right we'll deal with him, sit back and relax. Wiping the blood off of his lip Shigaraki smiled, so you brought friend, isn't that nice? I think it's time for me to show you what I got from yours he said a red light began to shine from Shigaraki's pocket. Kilowog stepped up to Shigaraki, hey you three go take care of the girl with the violet colored ring, Yuriko was her name I think. She's currently injured, get to her and capture the other one he ordered. The other lanterns nodded and went to help Yuriko, that's when Izuku walked beside Kilowog, think we can take him. Kilowog smiled, with me and you fighting together? Easy, just follow my lead kid. Cover me, while I take him at close range he said jumping at Shigaraki. Izuku quickly flew to a nearby roof and created a green construct sniper rifle. Laying down he looked through the lens, in his sights was Shigaraki. Izuku took a deep breath and fired, the shock wave shook the building as the bullet left the barrel of the gun. Shigaraki created several yellow construct snakes that launched towards Kilowog. Seeing them coming he quickly created several knives cutting the heads off the snakes. Tsk! Alien bastard! Shigaraki yelled out pointing his ring at Kilowog. However before he could do anything a green construct bullet shot by his arm causing his arm to recoil back. Off in the distance he saw Izuka perched up on a building, you. They dry face. You're looking the wrong way. Kilowog yelled out as he created green construct gloves with spikes near the knuckles and cracking Shigaraki across the face. Shigaraki tried to defend himself but every time he raised his ring Izuka would fire another shot causing him to cancel the construct. Damn it, I need some distance. But with their combos I can't even think straight. Kilowog continued to pummel Shigaraki, finally getting tired of it Shigaraki let out a massive yellow blast of energy, enough, he yelled out, pushing Kilowog away. Izuku took this chance and fired a shot, however now that he wasn't getting beaten Shigaraki created a pair of chopsticks and caught the bullet in midair. He then turned to where Izuku was and smiled, my turn. Izuku's eyes went wide as he created another green bullet and quickly tried to reload, as he pulled back the bolt a yellow construct rock smashed through the lens. The green rifle shattered in Izuku's hands, looking up Izuku saw several rocks heading his way. Move kid. Kilowog managed to grab and pull Izuku out of the way of the yellow constructs, the two green lanterns managed to escape. Turning back they saw the building that Izuku was on crumble, thanks Kilowog. Don't thank me yet kid, we still aren't out of the woods yet. Kilowog said, turning back to Shigaraki. Floating in the air Shigaraki smiled as blood dripped from his mouth, now it's time for some payback, he said, extending out his hands. 
his ring glowed yellow as the ground beneath them began to rumble. Just then the earth was split apart by a giant yellow construct worm-like monster appeared, it opened its mouth revealing razor-sharp teeth lining the top and bottom. Ah hell! The monster roared as it lunged at Izuku and Kilawag, here he comes. Izuku yelled out, firing a blast of willpower at the monster. The two green lanterns began to fly in circles around the monster trying to blast it but they were doing little to no damage. We aren't doing any damage, said Kilawag. Suddenly the worm monster turned around and managed to hit Kilawag with its massive tail. Kilawag smashed through several buildings before smashing into the ground. Still think you and your friends can win? Shigaraki asked, floating in mid-air. Izuka clenched his fists, Shigaraki, he yelled out flying towards him at full speed. With Yuriraka. Toga watched as the other lanterns arrived, I should deal with her before they show up, she then created a large violet-colored knife. So long Okako, I'll make sure you are nothing but a distant memory from GL's mind, Toga said, licking her lips. As she brought down the knife, three blasts of green hit Toga in the side, sending her across and into a wall. Landing beside Yuriko were three green lanterns, check on her, I'll secure the target, one of them said, creating green chains around Toga's arms and legs. One of the female green lanterns leaned down to check on Yuriko, Hey are you alright? She asked, that's when she noticed the wound. We need to stop the bleeding, she then created a patch stopping the bleeding. GGL, where is he? Yuriko asked, her voice was weak. Don't worry about him, Kilawag is with him, another lantern said. Toga stared at the green lanterns, why you dare get in my way? My love for GL can't be chained or bound. She then smiled. Only released. Just then Toga's body began to glow violet, the other green lanterns saw this and began to reinforce the chains. However Toga's power began to crack the chains, GL will taste my love. And none of you will get in my way, she yelled out shattering the green construct chains holding her arm. Reaching over she grabbed the other chains and crushed them. The green lanterns were in shock, T that's impossible. Toga's eyes burned with violet energy, faster than any of the green lanterns could react she appeared in front of one of them. Let me show you my love, she said reaching out and grabbing one of them by the neck. The lantern tried to lift their ring but before they could Toga squeezed snapping the neck of the green lantern. The others looked on in horror as they saw the green light fade from the ring of the lantern, how dare you, the female lantern yelled out firing a full powered blast of willpower at Toga. Toga tossed the lantern aside before facing the blast, my love is absolute, she yelled out, taking the brunt of the blast. The green beam engulfed Toga and destroyed the buildings behind her. Getting to her feet Yuriko watched in awe at the destructive power of the ring. Just then from within the blast a violet color began to shine, and Yuriko knew what this meant. Look out, she yelled out but it was too late. From within the blast Toga appeared just inches away from the female lantern, W what? Without hesitation Toga fired a blast at the lantern, piercing her heart. The female lantern dropped dead, now it was only Yuriko and one other green lantern. Now then, who's next? Toga asked, walking towards them. The last remaining green lantern took a step back in fear, G get away. You damn monster! he yelled out cowering for his life. Just then his ring began to flash green. Lantern of Sector 478, you are experiencing great fear that you cannot overcome. You are now unworthy of the green lantern ring, immediate replacement must be found. The lantern's eyes went wide, and no. No 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 no. Please wait, no matter how much he begged it to stay it began to leave his hand. He tried desperately to hold onto it but it was no use, the ring left his hand depo worrying him. Just then Toga appeared before the now former Green Lantern, looks like you lost your will, how about some love, she said, placing a hand on his head. Toga stop. Yuriko yelled out. However her words did not reach Toga, 
Eureka watched as the alien began to turn into nothing but violet-colored dust. Toga has just killed three green lanterns like it was nothing, just then all three rings began to glow and float in the air. Ring Status Report Green Lanterns of Sectors 478, 1729, and 2962 deceased. Scanning nearby sectors for suitable replacements. Eureka watched the rings leave, hey where do you think you're looking? I'm still here. Toga yelled out, hitting Eureka with a blast that sent her flying back. However before she hit the wall Toga created chains that attached themselves from building to building and stretched her limbs to the max. Eureka yelled out in pain as her arms and legs felt like they were going to get ripped off, she hung in mid-air for everyone to see. Toga then appeared in front of her, hurts doesn't it? The sensation of your arms and legs being stretched, all I need to do now is give it some more kick and... Raising her finger Toga pulled on the chains causing Eureka to yell out in pain. However she stopped, Eureka glared at Toga, her purple eyes seemed to enter Eureka's mind. Before I kill you, I want you to say something, say that you never loved GL renounce your love over him. Blood poured down Eureka's open wound, and never, you can go ahead and kill me because there is no way I would do that. Just then the chains tightened causing more pain to Eureka, say it. Toga screamed in Eureka's face. Eureka gritted her teeth, never. Her refusal to do so even when she was in pain pissed Toga off, fine, then die. Toga created a large violet colored sword. Gripping the weapon Toga began to thrust it forward aimed at Eureka's abdomen. Time seemed to slow down for Eureka closed her eyes as the sword approached her, but I will say this. Toga's eyes went wide. I love GL. More than anything in the world. No matter what you do to me, I will always love him. At the last second Eureka opened her eyes revealing that her usually hazelnut colored eyes had turned violet, but it was the same as Toga's. No, instead the symbol of the violet core appeared. The sword shattered as it made contact with Eureka's abdomen, what? Toga yelled out holding the now shattered sword. Just then the chains holding Eureka began to fade, Toga looked up to see a bright violet colored aura surrounding Eureka. That aura? Those eyes. What did you do? Eureka looked at her hands, I I don't know, but this warmth I'm feeling. This is my love for GL. Toga began to tremble with anger, don't f asterisk ck with me. I am the only one who has the right to love him. Not some b asterisk tch like you. Pulling back her fist Toga went in to punch Eureka in the face. However Eureka caught her fist before it hit, she then began to twist it causing Toga to grunt in pain. My turn, Pulling Toga close Eureka punched her in the face sending her flying back to the ground with so much force that the ground caved in. Toga struggled to stand as blood poured from her now broken nose. Why you, I'll make you pay for that. Turning around, Toga fired several blasts at Eureka. However the blast simply bounced right off of Eureka doing no damage. Seeing that they were doing nothing, Eureka decided it was time to counter attack. From her hand a chain began to appear and at the end attached was a massive wrecking ball. Gripping the chain Eureka flew down towards Toga and swung the chain with all her might. Toga tried to put up a shield but it shattered on contact. The wrecking ball hit Toga in the side, she managed to put her arm up but it broke in the process. The wrecking ball sent Toga across the street and through a building. Her arm was a mangled mess as she laid on the ground. Just then Eureka landed a few feet away. Why you must really love GL given the amount of power you have now. I'm almost jealous, said Toga coughing out blood. Eureka began to walk over to Toga without saying a word. Well? What are you waiting for, kill me and be done with it? Eureka raised her ring and pointed it at Toga, the ring began to glow as she prepared to fire. Toga's eyes widened. Eureka could see the fear in her eyes. No. Said Eureka, lowering her arm. Toga was shocked, W what do you mean no? It's over Toga, 
you're beat, there's no reason for me to kill you. Besides if I do GL would see me differently. He'll see me like you, and I'm not like you. Eureka said, staring at Toga. So you're just going to let me go? You know if you do, I'll just come back over and over again. I won't stop until I make GL mine. Said Toga with a smile. Eureka nodded, I know that, so that's why I'll take your power. She then created cuffs and bound Toga to the ground. Now unable to even move Toga knew what she was going to be, and no. Please. Don't, anything but that. Eureka crouched down near Toga's stomach and saw the violet-colored marking on her belly button. She then reached in causing Toga to yell. Then she felt it, pulling the object out. Eureka held a star sapphire gem in her hand, the source of Toga's power. This was something good and your love corrupted it but no more. Eureka began to squeeze. No. Please. Toga yelled out pleading for her to stop. Toga watched as the gem shattered into pieces, just then her costume began to disappear revealing her old villain one. You won't be able to hurt anyone anymore. Why Yuri a monster? Toga said before falling unconscious. Sorry Toga but you shouldn't have this power, love is meant to be something pure. Eureka said, turning around. Yes. That is correct, love is powerful if in the right hands. But those who are corrupted by it aren't worthy of such love a voice said. Eureka looked around but found no one, who said that. In time I will reveal who I am but for now you must go. The one you love is in trouble. Just then a massive explosion of will hit Eureka, knocking her down. I Izuku. With Izuku. Hey 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 hey. Izuku yelled out as his construct guns began to fire several rounds at Shigaraki. Creating a shield Shigaraki began to fly towards Izuku. Then the clicking sound of empty magazines were heard, Izuku looked back to see his construct gun smoking, sh asterisk t. Looks like you're out of bullets and out of time. Shigaraki came in with his fist pulled back. Just then a yellow construct of a lion's head appeared around his fist. With a mighty roar the construct bit down towards Izuku, thinking fast he created a crowbar and stuck it into the lion's jaw stopping it. Izuku was being pushed back as he struggled to hold back the construct. Give it up, lantern. You don't stand a chance. Izuku grunted, never, I will not give up. Too many people are depending on me, I can't lose, not now, not ever. Shigaraki smiled. Very well, then you can just go ahead and die. Falling back slightly, Shigaraki then created the lion's claws and brought them down towards Izuku. He quickly put up his construct crowbar but the yellow claws cut through them like they were butter. What? With nothing to hold them back the claw slashed Izuku across the chest, ripping his costume and causing blood to splatter. Izuku's eyes went white as he fell to the earth, Crashing into the ground Izuku struggled to get up. That's when Shigaraki appeared a few feet away, now you see it was all pointless. There is no way you could have beaten me he said walking towards Izuku. D damn it, he's too strong. Come on Izuku there has to be something you can do, he thought to himself, just then Izuku saw Kilowog appear from one of the buildings. Hey kid. Maneuver 47. Kilowog yelled out landing behind Shigaraki. But you said never to do that. Izuku yelled back. Just shut up and do it. Kilowog then pointed his ring right at Shigaraki. Izuku did the same and pointed his ring right at Shigaraki. Ready. Do it, he yelled out. Both rings glowed bright green as they fired a blast at each other. The two beams met in the middle where Shigaraki was engulfing him between both beams. Shigaraki at the last second managed to put up a yellow shield on either side stopping the blasts, is that the best you got, he asked, gloating. Full power kid. Kilowog yelled out pushing his ring to max. Hey 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 hey
With a ferocious battle cry Izuku put every last drop of will he had into that blast. As they did the yellow construct shields that Shigaraki put up began to crack, what? Impossible. Izuku's ring then began to speak, ring power, 50%, 40%, 30%, 20%, 10%. With the two beams increased power the shield began to crack even faster, however that wasn't the only thing Shigaraki had to worry about. Every person's will is not the same and no Green Lantern can manipulate others, what this meant that Izuku's and Kilowog's beams weren't just going through each other. They were actually collecting in the middle and building, a massive ball of green will began to gather in the middle. Shigaraki saw this, well it seems you two have done well in pushing me this far but unfortunately for you, I have something else up my sleeve, he then reached into his pocket and pulled out something that glowed crimson red. Just the massive ball of will exploded outward shattering Shigariki's shields and sending both lanterns away. The resulting explosion was so massive that it leveled the surrounding buildings, reducing them to nothingness and shattering every building's window in the city. Izuku was buried underneath dirt, Izuku, 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 a voice called out to him. He opened his eyes but saw nothing but darkness that is until someone removed the dirt from his face. Izuku coughed as he was pulled free from the dirt, looking up he saw Kilowog and Yuriraka down up at him. H hey guys, how are you doing, he asked, smiling. Yuriraka smiled, idiot. Did we get him? Asked Izuku, as Yuriraka helped him up. Kilowog nodded, yeah we got him, there wasn't even anything left. Damn it, I didn't want to kill him but there was no other way. Izuku said looking down. The group fell silent, don't worry Izuku, come on let's go help All Might. Yuriraka said, holding up Izuku. He nodded as they began to walk over to where All Might was. However before they could get there a beam of red energy shot into Izuku's shoulder piercing it. GL. Yuriraka yelled out. That was the blast of a red lantern? But how? There shouldn't be any more red lanterns on the planet. Kilowog yelled out surprised. That's when Shigaraki appeared, I am possible. Oh but it is possible, you're looking at living proof. Shigaraki yelled out, spewing out napalm blood. In his right hand glowed the yellow lantern ring of fear and on his left hand burned the crimson red of the red lantern of rage. The one sinestro core symbol on his chest was now half red lantern, D did he just fuse fear with rage, asked Yuriraka. Yes, two of the strongest emotions one can feel are now working together. This isn't going to end well. Izuku said, holding his now bleeding shoulder. What do we do? Can we even fight against him now, asked Yuriraka in fear of what Shigaraki has become. I I don't know, but we have to try. If he learns to control that rage he will become unstoppable, Kilowog said, firing a blast, Izuku and Yuriraka followed suit. Shigaraki stood still as the blasts disintegrated as they made contact with him, T this rage, this fear. I feel it burning through my veins. It's amazing. Time to test out what I can do he said flying towards Izuku, Yuriraka and Kilowog. Nothing that they threw at him was working, Yuriraka move. Izuku yelled out, pushing her out of the way. Shigaraki dive bombed Izuku and tackled him to the ground, you are weak lantern. Always have been, always will be, he said slamming Izuku over and over into the ground. He then opened his mouth and spilled napalm blood all over Izuku burning him and his costume. Izuku yelled out as the napalm blood burned him, just then Kilowog and Yuriraka appeared behind him ready to blast Shigaraki off of Izuku. However Shigaraki turned around and pointed the red ring of rage and fired a beam at them. They both put up shields but they proved useless, Yuriraka was sent into a building while Kilowog was sent flying into the sky. Why don't we go see how All Might is doing shall we? Shigaraki grabbed Izuku by the arm as he flew towards the fight. With All Might. All Might wasn't going so good, all for one knew exactly where to hit where it would hurt. All Might was bleeding from his lip and breathing erratically, give it up All Might you can't win, 
not with that weak body of yours, said AFO standing unfazed. Shut up. I will never give up, not when people are relying on me. I will not let you ruin the lives of so many innocent people. I won't. All Might yelled out running towards AFO. AFO lifted up his hand to activate his quirk but All Might stopped him by grabbing his wrist and squeezing it hard. Texas, smash, he yelled out punching AFO in the face so hard that he sent him down into the dirt. The black mask that AFO was wearing shattered but as All Might looked down, his fist began to steam, along with half of his body. All Might's true form was starting to show and AFO knew what this was, looks like you've reached your time limit, All Might. Seeing a chance AFO activated his quirk and with a massive explosion, he sent All Might flying back. All Might dug his feet into the ground, slowing his momentum down he finally stopped as his entire right side was now skinny and frail. Well this is just a pathetic show, one more blast should do it, AFO said raising his hand. If I can dodge this, then I can counter attack. All Might thought, but that's when he saw a smile on AFO. I know what you are thinking, if I just dodge this then I can counter attack right? But will you really dodge? AFO asked preparing his attack. That's when All Might heard it, H help me, a woman was stuck in the rubble behind him. Now, what will you do? AFO said firing off a massive shockwave attack towards All Might. All Might clenched his fist and pointed it right at the blast, he was going to take it head on to save the woman behind him. The blast hit All Might and a massive explosion sent pieces of buildings and dust everywhere. As the dust settled the world watched as All Might stood with his hand a mangled mess and in his skinny form. AFO began to laugh, do you see this Japan? This is your number one hero, your so-called symbol of peace he was nothing but a lie. Now you all know, any hope you had is now gone. All Might fell to his knees as he coughed out more blood, don't forget about this one master, a voice said above them. AFO looked up to see Shigaraki now donning the red and yellow, my son, it seems you have accomplished what you wanted. And you brought over a friend I see. Shigaraki nodded, this is the vigilante known as Green Lantern and as you can see he has fallen. Not even the ones posing as heroes can save you, he said holding the bleeding body of Izuku. Japan watched as Izuku's broken body was now on every TV screen and every smartphone. Even he lost. Is there anyone who can beat these two? Man is there no one we can trust now, the crowd began to ask. Why Yuri wrong? What he and I are can never be changed, for we are both heroes. I am the symbol of peace. A beacon of hope for everyone, and I will not let them down. Hear me and do not fear, why? Because I am here. All Might said transforming his right arm into his muscle form. Come on All Might. You can do it. Beat this guy. Save US. You can't give up. The people all yelled out for their hero. Just then somewhere in space a ping was heard, new host has been found, destination Earth the object then quickly took off leaving a blue trail behind it. Uh, 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 if you want him to live all might then just stand there and die Shigaraki said creating a red construct saw blade and pressing it up against Izuku's neck. All might gritted his teeth, cowards. Make your choice all might, your life, or his. Choose or you both die. AFO said with an evil smile. Izuku struggled to keep his eyes open but he managed to look up to see a shine of blue light. All might didn't know what to do time's up. Kill him Shigaraki. AFO yelled out transforming his arm with the ultimate combinations of quirks. He then jumped at All Might ready to kill him, Shigaraki raised the saw ready to slice Izuku's neck. However before they could a blue light came crashing down right in front of All Might, Toshinori Yagi of Earth, you have the power to instill great hope. The ring then slipped onto All Might's hand. Welcome to the Blue Lantern Corps. Instantly All Might turned back into his muscle form, turning to AFO he raised his hand and created a blue fire that erupted from the ground. Master! Shigaraki yelled out as he saw AFO get swallowed up by the blue flames. 
That's it. This one dies, he said, turning to Izuku. All Might then raised his hand toward Izuku, all will be well. Izuku could feel it, ring power, 20%, 40%, 60%, 80%, 100%, 120% All Might was charging Izuku's ring to the max. Opening his eyes Izuku let out a blast of will that pushed Shigaraki away. No. You were as good as dead. This fight was over, we had won. Not while hope exists. And especially if I have the will to fight, said Izuku now fully recharged. Hope. F asterisk CK hope. Power is the only thing that matters and I still have more than you do. Shiagraki said as the red and yellow rings began to glow. As much as he hated to admit it, Shigaraki was right, even with his ring recharged he was no match for Shigaraki who had two rings. That's when he heard a voice call out to him, GL, he looked down to see Yuriko bruised and bleeding atop a roof. Catch, she yelled out throwing something. Yuriko then fell on the roof, her violet-colored costume disappeared, take my love. Izuka grabbed the object, opening his hand he saw what it was, the violet ring of love. Izuka smiled, thank you Yuriko, I love you too he said putting on the ring on his left ring finger. He could feel it, Yuriko's love for him, just then violet-colored stars appeared on the back of Izuku's hands. Love and will working together, who would have guessed, Kilowog said looking up to see Izuku surrounded by a green and violet flame. Bring it Shigaraki, I will show you the power of Yuriko's love and my will. Izuku said as the two rings began to glow.